Hi. So we're going to be looking at the Tone Project's Unison Mastering Compressor. Number one is the sound. The sound is just amazing. It absolutely blew me away like almost no other plugin I can think of in it. The immediacy of like, wow, this sounds great. Um, it just sounds amazing. Uh, it's impossible to make it sound bad. But just putting it on Applying very mi minor compression almost always seems to improve the sound of things um, and it's so transparent You can really use it to bring out certain elements and aspects and work with the depth of the sound stage front to back and It's amazing and I hope you find this useful uh, So let's have a look Okay, so now for some musical examples um, I'm going to start with some presets, um, presets that I've made or I've taken some of the built-in presets and altered them a bit. Um, and what I'm going to do is bring them in and out. So I'm going to start with this out and then I'm going to bring it in. So you can just get some idea of what a few presets sound like. Um, I've chosen presets that kind of work with this piece of music. Um, and then we can start, I'll zero out some of the controls and start moving them so you can get an idea of what they do. So starting with um, it bypassed. Right away to my ears, um, it's just got a punchier and more solid low end, and the top end is nice and smooth. It's controlled, um, and it just has that um, expensive, uh, classy sound, uh, which is so hard to get. Um, this just oozes it with pretty much any preset you try. So. I'll try some other presets that may not be level matched, so bear with me if I'm adjusting the gain here. They may not be level matched to begin with. Um, so let's say try this one. Yeah, this one is just much beefier and, and solid uh, and punchy and attacky in the low end. Um, and it has that lovely sheen about it. Now I'm pushing these things way too far, just, just so you don't think I'd ever compress something th this much on a, on a two bus or in a mastering context, not at all. I mean, this is way, way 
in beyond what I'd ever do, but it's just to make it easier to hear on YouTube because the quality of YouTube is, is not that great. And anyway, when you're demonstrating, it's nice to have things a little bit exaggerated just so you can get a quick uh, idea, uh, especially when you're not familiar with the music. Um, it's easy to hear these things when they're a little bit more extreme, which is why I'm pushing this thing into 4 dB gain reduction, which I would never normally do. So let's move on to this one here. Now, just to stop for a second, I mentioned before about this meter. If you click on this, it, you can see it zooms out and in and this particular patch is zoomed in so you can see it's um, it was looked like it was compressing more than it was but here we go again with it back to minus five So just the smoothness of that top end is, is just really astonishes me. Um, and the whole sound of this patch um, is very smooth and it yet solid and tight sounding. It really controls the sound and fills it in. So the other thing that's really quite tricky, I find with compressors in particular, when matching the gain, because uh, it's, it's like with saturators, um, it changes the density of the material quite a lot, depending on how you're compressing it, but always to some degree. So you're judging gain matching, but you're not really ever going to be able to gain match because some parts of the music are going to be louder. And comparison to other parts of the music, depending on how you have the settings compared to the bypassed version. So it's like, well, what do you match it to? It's very much a kind of guessing game. You try to get it close. It's really important to get it close so that you don't fool yourself. But it's impossible to say when it's exactly there because there's always going to be, you think that's about the same, but, but that part of it's a little bit louder or that part of it's a bit quieter, the other part's louder in comparison. And yeah, it's a complex um, thing the closer you listen to it. Um, so now let's move on to one more patch, I think. This one um, is going to show some of the MS features of this. Um, compressor so let's start with this bypass So you can hear with that one that it really opens out the sound stage considerably. It actually seems to uh, make the music deeper from front to back. Um, it's actually um, the MS is obviously changing the stereo image, widening it a little bit, but it 
amazingly seems to deepen it as well. So um, there's a few examples of compression uh, patches. Um, I'm going to now, uh, I think, start with one and then zero out down here. If you alt click on these, um, it sets them back to zero or their default state, um, which is really handy. But just so when I move things around, it's not sort of a moving goalpost because you don't know what, it, what it sounds like if, if all these other things were, were set in different positions. I'm going to set them all to the default kind of zero point, And hopefully that's going to make it easier to, um, to hear what's going on when I move these controls around. So uh, I think that should be here. And I'm going to put that there. Okay, so now I'm going to start moving the controls around. Hopefully you can hear from that, that even though I've got the attack time super fast here, because I've taken the loud attack time and made it longer, and I've also transient overridden it here, um, and slowed down the attack time for transients, so you're getting those are transients coming through a lot stronger, even though the rest of the music is pretty clamped by that. So there I, was, there I was messing with the release time and getting the, the loud, I moved this over here till I saw the light blinking meaning and I could see that the loud was, parts were triggering and I give it a really fast, um, a really short release time just on the, the loud parts. So I'm going to try going the other way now.
that was with a a long release time there for the the loudest parts and a shorter release time for the quieter parts um, now let's see what else we can do here let's start working with some of these uh, detector parts here What I'm going to do here, I think, is I'm going to just zero these out and then I'm going to copy copy this into the B setting here um, so that I can switch back and forth after I've changed things. So you can see how the mid-range there is compared to the high end is driving it much more so that when I bring in this setting here the mid-range comes back and the highs come forward more and swapping it round back to the to the B the the mid-range comes more to the foreground so let's keep playing with this let's set these back again So they're working on the low end uh, and giving it a fast RMS, um, meaning that it's going to be pretty, uh, 
pretty fastly reacting, um, but not too fast because um, it's not like a peak detection. I didn't have that turned up particularly high. Um, and it definitely controlled the low end and tightened up the low end. Um, you have to be careful. It's, we're not working in multiband here. So if you drive this too hard by like say turning up the weight, for example, um, it's going to start pumping. The bass is going to start pumping everything. So you've got to be gentle with that, but I was able to really effectively tighten up the low end by giving the ratio a bit higher on the lows and moving it more over to, to, to faster RMS. Um, so now what I think I'll do is um, move over to some drums. So this can also be really great on the drum bus. Um, so I'm going to solo the drums here. Okay. I mean, I find it very easy, just so you don't get scared off by all this, I find it very easy to just get a really great sound using just these controls. And you can really do a lot with that because you've got all the controls you, you know, you're used to. Um, but obviously, once you get into here, um, there's so much more that can be done. And just don't forget, that you've got all these presets to choose from that will set all this up for you. So now drum bus. Um, let's start with some drum, a couple of drum patches, just to show you that it can indeed do a great job on the drums. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to start with a bypass and then I'm going to bring it in. And this is a real, this is going to grab the drums hard. So just to give you some ideas there of what this is capable of on a drum, a drum bus. And here's another one. Um, I'll start again with it out and bring it in.
So again, these are extreme effects, but just to give you an idea that it can do that if you want. And obviously you can go real subtle with it. But um, I hope this has been uh, of use to you. Um, I think it's an ama beyond amazing compressor. Um, it is aimed at mastering and it's great on the drum bus. Um, it really is crafted around the idea of working on an entire two bus mix mastering scenario, but also great, absolutely great for drums. And I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, it really is, um, I think, destined to become a legend in the compression world. Um, it really is something else. The sound of it is just amazing. Uh, in terms of just the sheer quality of the sound of it, I think, uh, in a mastering context. Um, I've been using, I've only had it for two and a half days, as I said, but I'm finding in a mastering context, I've been using it against my other bunch of favorite ones, and I'm almost always coming back to this one because it just has that um, really, it gives everything that expensive sound right away. Um, and it's at the same time it really controllable. You can get it to do anything you need it to do in a mastering context. And it's got that silky smooth highs and the really punchy deep lows uh, and everything in between. It's just, it's great. So I hope you found this useful. And if you did, please um, subscribe and give the video a like. And I hope to see you next time.